Welcome back. In this video, you will learn about the multifidus lift test. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the multifidus lift test and what it measures, instruct a patient in their role in the performance of the test, position a patient appropriately on the examination table, identify the correct location for assessing multifidus response, recognize the different response patterns, interpret the response in the context of the examination, and recall the strengths and limitations of this test for the diagnostic process. And now, Kyle Kiesel will show you how to perform the multifidus lift test. Hi, my name is Dr. Kyle Kiesel. I'm a physical therapist and a researcher, and uh, my research was, was in back pain, and we developed clinical tests to identify multifidus dysfunction. This test is very simple. The patient lies on their stomach, and we activate the multifidus through a reactionary uh, load to create the muscle to contract, and that's just simply lifting an arm. We validated the test through indwelling EMG and ultrasound imaging, looking at EMG change as you lift your arm and thickness change in the muscle. That then has now been developed to the multifidus lift test where we're just gonna palpate for the muscle thickening underneath our fingers. So come on in, Scott. We'll take a look at positioning and show you how to do this test. The patient needs to be prone on the exam table with their head facing directly forward and their feet off the edge of the table. The arms need to be flexed to approximately 120 degrees of the shoulder and elbows flexed to about 90 degrees. Often a pillow is required to be placed underneath the patient's pelvis to flatten their lumbar spine to reduce the lordotic curve. To obtain the activation position, the patient will need to raise their contralateral arm toward the ceiling approximately five centimeters. The spine should be neutral and the muscles should be in a relaxed state. So he's gonna lie on his stomach, just straight prone, but we do want a pillow underneath the pelvis because we gotta flatten out that lordosis. I don't want a big lordosis, I want pretty neutral. We just shoot bottom of the glute fold for the, for the bottom of the pillow. The best place to palpate the multifidus and get reliable results is around the L4-5 level. The reason for this is that at this level, there is much more muscle bulk to the multifidus and it's easier to feel the changes. That's not to say that you can't do it higher or lower than this level, but here will give you the most consistent result. You can identify the L4-5 interspinous space by palpating the iliac crest bilaterally and following them along to the intercrestal line. This should intersect with the L4-5 interspinous space. If you then move your hand caudally, you can feel the L4 spinous process with one of your fingertips and the L5 spinous process with another. Next, slide your fingertip just slightly lateral to the spinous process and you'll be palpating directly over the multifidus and just adjacent to the longissimus muscle. And then the palpation point, we just find iliac crest, come right to the midline. We're at that four or five space. And then I'm gonna palpate up on L4 with one finger, down on L5 with the other. And then I'm just gonna slide laterally a bit, sink my fingers right down into what we call the little multifidus gutter, or right over the multifidus. So when I sink my fingers in, I should be able to push back medially and I'm pushing directly into the spinous process. Now, what could I do wrong here? I'm on L4-5, that's great. If I go too far, I get out over the muscle adjacent to the multifidus, that's the longissimus. It's gonna come on too, and I'm just palpating in the wrong place. So very important, palpate, slide my fingers, Find the gutter, let your fingers sink right in. When you're comfortable with that, I recommend just two fingers so you're not confusing what you're feeling. And he's just going to simply lift the opposite arm or contralateral arm up a couple inches and right back down. Lift again up and back down. And I'm feeling for that firm contraction coming straight up under my fingers, coming from the bottom straight up. If it if it's not crisp and doesn't come on just right when you lift his arm, I think it's a little sluggish. Of course, we're always gonna compare the other side. So this is the right multifidus left arm. Now I'm gonna come across 
It's best if you switch sides clinically and come from the other side. Obviously, I won't, won't do that for the camera, but I'm gonna get in that same position right in that little gutter. I got my fingers in. He's gonna lift the arm back down. I'm feeling for that contraction coming right up under my fingers. When the patient raises their arm, you will feel one of three things that can be categorized as normal multifidus activation, multifidus inhibition without compensatory activation, or compensatory activation of other muscles such as the longissimus. When the patient has a normal multifidus response upon activation, you will feel a crisp multifidus contraction filling directly under your fingertips. The muscle will become firmer and you should be able to feel the dome of the muscle. Ask the patient to lower their arm and you should feel the muscle relax as well. Ask the patient to repeat the procedure again to confirm your findings. When the patient has multifidus inhibition without any compensation, the contraction under your fingertips will be much weaker to the point where you may not feel it at all. While the patient is in the activated position, roll your hand a bit more medially by a few centimeters to make sure that you are not missing the muscle. Ask the patient to relax. You may not feel any change. And then repeat the test to confirm your findings. If the patient has compensatory activation of other posterior muscles when the patient takes the active position, you will feel the contraction of the longissimus. This is a much more superficial muscle than the multifidus, and as it contracts, it will push your fingers toward the midline. Ask the patient to relax, and that pressure forcing your fingers toward the midline should be relieved. Ask the patient to repeat the procedure again to confirm your findings. So what makes an abnormal contraction or a positive test would be two primary things. One, I just don't feel the muscle come on. It's just dysfunctional, inhibited, I don't really like the word weak, but you could think about it weak. It's just not coming on. You feel nothing or very little activation. Or what you can feel is I'm in the correct position and rather than multifidus come on, there's a compensatory contraction from the outside in where that longissimus actually takes over and pushes my fingers immediately. So if you don't feel it from the bottom up, if you feel it outside in, that's a compensatory activation of the longissimus, okay? So pretty simple test here. Get in position, arms, elbows go even with the ears, elbows at about 90, find my palpation point. I sink into that multifidus gutter. Very important that you're in the right place. I'm palpating for activation. He lifts an arm, back down, lift the arm, back down. I compare that to the other side. Make sure I'm in the gutter. He lifts, back down should come right up. If it doesn't, again, if longissimus is pushing you medially, that would be a compensatory contraction and also a positive test. As you can see, this is a very simple test to administer. And the good news is that when you do the test correctly, it correlates strongly and significantly with ultrasound measures of change of thickness of the multifidus muscle. Additionally, the inner observer reliability is high. There are a few limitations to be aware of. First, this test has been validated on patients with low back pain, but this is a test of multifidus dysfunction. It does not necessarily link the dysfunction to the back pain. There are also a few situations where you may get false negative or false positive findings, including patients with a high BMI and when the patient has a very athletic, well-developed muscular system.